Hi, I'm Pedro from Coffee Parts, and today we're talking about grinders. What are they, and why do you need them? They're not a cheap toy. So why are we adding these to the coffee setup when you already have the machine and you can get pre-ground coffee? Once you buy coffee, if it's pre-ground, it's oxidized and basically aged quite quickly. So you're never gonna get that best result out of your coffee machine. Once you have a home grinder, that changes everything. Now you bring beans and bring them home, storing them in the bag that it came with, you know, the Ziploc bag, or a coffee container, which we'll cover in another video, and then grinding on demand. Now there is a little bit of work with this in terms of you don't want too much coffee in your grinder because it's obviously gonna oxidize a lot quicker than in the bag, but you don't want too little in that you get popcorning. You want that weight to push that coffee down. And these days you want a grinder that grinds on demand. So you don't want it grinding into a dosage chamber where you then bring out the coffee and it's effectively pre-ground. You want it grinding when you hit that button. Most grinders these days will grind based on time. And with time, it basically works like this. The finer you grind your coffee, the longer it's gonna to take to grind. So there's a correlation between adjusting your grind finer and taking longer to grind and invert to that grinding coarser. It takes a quicker amount of time. Now, which grinder? So we're gonna look at the top three grinders based on a relative budget and look at individually, one by one, what makes each one different. The Mazza Grinder. Now, I've got a feeling you're probably familiar with this brand. There's not many cafes that haven't had a Mazza over the years. Generally speaking, a bigger version called the Mazza Roba but you would have seen maybe even a Coney Major or a Jolly. It was designed for cafes, or low volume cafes more specifically, restaurants, or to be used as a secondary grinders, to say decaf or single origin. But the most popular use case for it now is home. As the speciality world has increased, people have gone up and up on their grinders for home. Basically, the better the grinder, the better the result. So the Mazza has become super popular, and specifically the Mazza Mini. It's got a couple beautiful features, and We'll touch on some annoying ones too. It's a micrometric grinder, so it's stepless. You can basically move as much or as little finer or coarse as you want, which comes in really handy. Sometimes with the step grinders, you just wanna be between those notches and it's really annoying. It's digital display, so you've got your single, double, or grind on demand, and a menu that's relatively easy to adjust the time up and down. Basically, hold down the menu, let it flash, hit single or double, hit up and down on the time and hit the menu again, and you've set a new time. Now on this one, it's got an extra long fork for the quarter filter support. So there's two ways to go about it. Grinders either go the long fork or they go a little lip over the top that holds the porta filter. I actually prefer the long fork option because once you've got it in, even if it's ground, if it, there's a bit of an overflow, you can still tap it down and move it out without having to kind of lift it and disrupt the puck. It does come with, you know, the grounds tray. Personally, when I had my Mazza Mini, I never used it. I like the minimalistic look, but it's there. The power switch on the side is quite nice. There are a couple grinders that have it on the rear, and that's annoying when you've got up against a kitchen bench. Over here, it's simple. Now, one thing about this grinder is if you do start a double shot and it's running longer than you want or it's overflowing, the only way to stop it is to turn the grinder off, which is a little downside that I found, but generally speaking, no real big issue. Another nice little thing, kind of, tiny but I love things minimalistic and clean look is a power cable comes under the bottom. Now not many people will drill their kitchen bench and run all the cables seamless but that's what I've done in every place I've been at. I just love the look of floating machines with no power going up to splashbacks. So if that's the way you're going having the power come out from the bottom just makes it a really beautiful look especially if you're running it on something like an island or where you can see from 360 degree views. This is a standard hopper it comes with. You can get shorter hoppers as an optional item, which just brings down the height. Can be nice if you've got 600 mil um, height between the bench and your cupboards, just to give that extra clearance, because realistically, at home, you're never gonna fill that grinder. You're generally gonna run it to about there, so you've got enough coffee pushing the weight down to avoid popcorning, but not too much coffee that's oxidizing. Another big plus is this is running 64 mil blades, and you can get optional blades like the SSPs in titanium, which just hold the sharpness for longer and give you better results. So that's the Mazza. 
awesome grinder, some positives, some negatives, but has been the Rockstar grinder for many years. There is, however, competition, and the competition will show you next. The Eureka. Now, the Eureka Special Eater is a relatively newcomer to like really burst into the home espresso scene, yet Eureka's been making grinders forever. And they're also a manufacturer that make grinders for many other brands. So you may not have seen them as Eureka's, but you might have seen them, for example, as a rocket grinder or as a Victoria Arduino in a cafe, like a Mythos 1, Mythos 2. They've really now created their own like brand and really pushing their brand. And in this unit, the Eureka Special Eater, it's kind of towards the top end of their home grinders. There is the XL above this, but this sits above to say the Manuale and the Silencio and the Classico. Now, with this grinder, it's a stepless grinder. So once again, you can adjust the grind just as you need in micrometric adjustments. So you're not having to sit between um, notches basically. So you get whatever grind you want and it's based on time. So the finer you grind, the slower the time. And that's so easy to do. So you just basically hit single or double, up or down on time and you're set. If you want to grind just while the button's pressed in, you just hit both and now you're just grinding, start, stop. Single, double, start, stop, adjust the time. Super easy, probably one of the best user interfaces out of all the grinders we carry. A little thing that they've done really nice is realize who the grinder is for, the home specialty market. And it made a really short hopper but by being sure, they've actually narrowed down the diameter of the hopper neck. So you don't need as much coffee to really push the weight down. And because the blades are on the 55 mil size, what happens is they've made a smaller neck, smaller blades, which has a smaller channel around, so lower retention. And just under the hopper, they put a bit of rubber in there. So it reduces the noise of the vibration from here. And they've added also rubber and a few bit of technology inside that reduces the sound. So basically it's a quieter grinder than most. So they've made a really small footprint, quiet grinder, small hopper, really beautiful user interface. They've really nailed this grinder in my opinion. The switch on the side is nice and it's quite small out of the way because realistically it doesn't have to be a big thing. One thing I don't like is the cable coming out of the rear. I like seamless designs and having power cables come out from the bottom as I like drilling through my bench and having all machines floating. So that's one thing I don't like. However, I presume for most people, not an issue. It's got a little fork which holds the porter filter based on it going here on this platform compared to like a long fork or to say the Mazza. Now, this is good. If you've overfilled it, sometimes it's just a little bit, you have to pull out with a bit more care than to say a longer fork, but it does keep the machine really small and tidy. This fork is removable and is adjustable in height. But yeah, beautiful, I do love it. And now we're gonna show you the equivalent machine, but with a rocket body. The Rocket Faustino. Now, I've always had a soft spot for Rocket design. They've nailed their coffee machines and they've now nailed grinders. Rocket have worked quite closely with Eureka to build this grinder. And you can notice some similarities between the Eureka Special Eater and the Rocket Faustino. The main difference is this machine runs 50 mil blades compared to the 55 and the Special Eater. With this grinder, we've got the stepless adjustment here. Yeah, in this case, it really feels refined. So they've really upped that knob and it's simple, but it just works well. And they've used the same GUI as the Special Eater with kind of the rocket branding. And that's awesome, because that was my favorite GUI. So it's quite simple, single, double, up and down the time. Once again, the finer you grind, the more time you need, the coarser, the less time. So there's a correlation. So it's good for this section to be simple to use. The inside of the hopper here, they've put a rubber between the hopper and the machine and also used Silencio technology inside to bring down the noise, which is awesome in an apartment, especially if you're doing early morning coffee. Now, two things I don't like about this grinder is the power cable being from the rear, which we've discussed before, where I just like the minimalistic look on counters, and the fork here. This fork doesn't actually hold your porter filter, so you're gonna need to hold the porter filter as you grind, compared to a Mazda that has a long fork, 
or the specialator that has a little clip over the top that holds it in. Not a big deal, because generally, if you're grinding coffee, you're there watching it. It only takes a few seconds anyway, but it's something that would have been nice to have. So overall, this machine, the look and feel, I don't feel like it comes across in camera, but it is really beautifully put together and a machine I'll be proud to have at home. We've covered now the Mazda Mini, the Eureka Special Eater, the Rocket Faustina, and they're kind of the top three we're recommending for Espresso at home. But we are gonna give you a bonus in, we're gonna look at the new Eureka XL, which has come out and just bridges the gap between those two worlds, and that's up next. We thought we'd throw in a bonus grinder, as Eureka has recently re released the Eureka XL. Now, what Eureka did is they looked at the special eater and said, how can we make this grinder have less retention, grind faster, be quieter, and still be easy to use in a small footprint? And the XL was born. Now, with this grinder, they really looked at the noise aspect, realizing that many people are doing coffee really early in the morning while others are still asleep. Now, like any grinder, it's not silent but it is a lot quieter. So same as with the Special Eater and the Rocket Faustino, they've run the rubber in here to reduce the vibration and reduce the noise, kept the diameter small so you don't have too much coffee in, you don't need too much coffee in there, and kept it all simple in terms of the micrometric adjustment and simple, easy to use GUI. They've also added little bits everywhere, a bit of rubber here on the porta filter support just to remove a bit of noise there, the bigger motor, made it a little bit quieter. They've added, just to top it all off, things like the mat, the tamping stand, once again with rubber, everything to make it quieter, faster and better. One thing they did do too is make it super consistent. So there is a variance of 0.2 of a gram between shots and that's super tight for grinders of this caliber. The power cable, like I mentioned, is out the back. I'm obsessed with power cables coming out the bottom so things look minimalistic. But in this case, because they've run the mat, etc., it does work. And the overall results of this grinder is just awesome. We will do a video specifically on this grinder later to cover it. And we've also realized that all these grinders are up there in price point, so not for everyone. In saying that, we'll do a budget grinder video soon so we can compare the two side, sides of the equation. Realistically, as long as you're buying beans and grinding coffee, you're already winning. But if you're gonna have a hot espresso setup, you really need to pair it with an awesome grinder because that's what makes the difference between good espresso and great espresso. Thank you for watching and I hope you liked our review on Espresso Home Grinders. We'll be doing a review on each of these grinders individually, but also I'd love to know what grinder would you like us to review? Leave us a comment on the grinder and we'll try and get a review done shortly. Thank you again for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe. See you next time. <laughs> what was it? I can't remember what was it.